there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna show you how I drew these popsicles with three different media on mixed media paper. Sometimes you'll see a tutorial and it will be beautiful, but you might not have the exact same media the artist is using. That's fine, you can oftentimes substitute with other medias. So I'm gonna show you how I would approach this popsicle drawing using markers with colored pencils, watercolor with colored pencils, and just colored pencils on their own. I'm starting off by just sketching in with colored pencils. Now I am switching between colored pencils so that I will have, my drawing lines will be the same color as the object I'm drawing. So I'm just kind of starting with the simple popsicle shape. I'm drawing the popsicle stick in brown. You can see that I've kind of ombre my colors. So, you know, I've drawn the green part of the popsicle with green and the orange part with orange, etc. And I thought it'd be kind of interesting to have three popsicles and have one right way up and the other two upside down. I thought it would kind of fit the paper better and, um, you know, be a little interesting. Now this is a kind of a simple design. It shouldn't take too much to sketch. Um, but I find often with the simple designs, you can then really dive deep into the detail because you've got um, you got kind of an easier basic framework. And then if you're a beginner and you don't want to go more into the detail, you can keep it more in kind of like a, a pop art style and, um, and really enjoy it that way. Now here what I'm doing is I'm just kind of like using my hands to measure uh, so I get the popsicles roughly the same size. I'm not looking for perfection. These popsicles, um, I want them to look kind of like artisanal and you know, like they've been made at home and I just wanted them to look, each look a little bit different from the other. The colored pencils that I'm sketching with here are the colored pencils I'm gonna use throughout the tutorial. I've never used them before, but I purchased them a couple months ago. They're the Sperer uh, Farben pencils. They are available on Amazon. I'll link to them down below. And I've been curious about these for a couple years because I've heard such good things about them. And I had several viewers ask for reviews on these. And so when I saw them on sale during Prime Day, I decided to grab them because I'd never seen them on sale before and um, then do a review on them. So that will be coming in a couple of weeks once I've used them a little bit more. Now, before I realized I was gonna do these in three different medias, I did all the popsicle sticks with alcohol marker. Alcohol marker is really nice. Actually, I didn't know how this bamboo mixed media paper would handle the alcohol marker, so this was kind of my test. And um, this paper actually comes bound on two sides, so it's like it's almost like a block, but not quite. And I was concerned the alcohol ink might bleed down to the next paper. So I do end up taking that top sheet off the block. And I would re recommend that if you're going to use alcohol ink on this particular bamboo mixed media paper, because it does, um, it is attached to the page down below. And I think it, if you like to really over blend and oversaturate, you could probably go into the next sheet because it definitely bleeds through to the back. So uh, you don't want to damage or, you know, waste any paper for, from bleed through because these work out to be about a dollar a sheet when you buy a pad. Now the first technique we're going to do is alcohol markers and color pencils. I'm using pastel toned alcohol markers. These are the um, the Artix or Oros. <laughs> it's like the Alp, but the Oros line has the brush tip. Their Alp line has the chisel tip. And you could use either. It doesn't matter if you want to use brush tip or you want to use chisel tip. I know the chisel and bullet markers in most brands are about half the price as the brush tip markers. And they're going to be just fine. I just, if I have the, if I have my druthers, I use a brush tip, but I certainly can do it with the, the uh, chisel tip as well. I probably wouldn't use the bullet tip for such a large area. In fact, I find that I rarely use a bullet tip. Um, I'm much more, if I have a bullet and a chisel marker, I'm usually using the chisel tip. So I'm ombre my color from this kind of tealy blue through green, through yellow, through peach, and then I'll be going into pink. And um, the reason I'm going with lighter colors is because I know I can make them darker when I use the um, the color pencil. So this is where I'm removing it because I'm like, ooh, that is gonna bleed through and I don't wanna ruin a sheet of this precious paper because I really like it. Um, and also because bamboo grows so fast, it's supposedly more sustainable than um, your typical mixed media paper. Um, I really need to investigate claims a little bit more because sometimes things we think are really sustainable aren't as sustainable as we think, like, you know, cotton shopping bags and 
all of that stuff. But hey, if you have them, using what you have is the most sustainable option. So if you have some markers in your stash already and you have some colored pencils in your stash already and you have some watercolors in your stash already, go get those and use them. If you don't and you want to have these different products in your stash, then you can check out the products that I'm using if you think they look good and they would you know fit your needs. I'll link everything in the video description if you want to check them out. But remember, the best supplies to use are the ones you already have. You've bought and paid for them. Uh, you bought them to use them. So don't be afraid to use them. Don't save them for some for some special day because uh, the special day often never comes. So just break them out, have fun. You bought and paid for them. Use your supplies. <laughs> Um, as you can see, I'm just kind of working back and forth through those colors to get a fairly good blend, but because we're going to be doing the colored pencils on top, I don't have to worry about it. Also, I wanted to get the look of kind of like um, some of the juice colors maybe bleeding into the other color in the popsicle, so any sort of imperfection actually will end up helping my cause. I also want to send a big thanks to my husband who edited this video. It was three hours and 39 minutes of footage. So um, I wanted to keep it real time so that you could kind of see the strokes as they're going down and get a good idea of how this piece came together rather than just doing a time lapse. And um, that took a lot of editing. So, um, uh, so if you want to drop in the comments, thank Jason for the editing job. I think he did a great job and uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. So on the indented parts on the popsicle, I'm going a little bit darker with a color because I want it to look like it's um, kind of pushed in or depressed and the especially near the edges you get a little bit more shadow so this is just very a very subtle technique where I go just a little bit darker um, now if you don't have a ton of markers then you just go with whatever is closest if you don't have a ton of markers you may find the watercolor technique I'm going to show you next to be a little bit easier um, because with watercolors you can pretty much infinitely blend by and lighten and darken just by either adding more paint more water mixing your colors so um so that's a really good option for mixed media if you don't have a lot of markers markers can have a pretty steep learning curve so um and they're not for everybody when I'm going in with these darker colors, it can be a little bit scary because you're seeing a lot of contrast. Now, there's a couple of reason you're, reasons you're seeing the contrast. For one, I'm using a darker marker, a more vivid color. It's more saturated. And the other thing is that on paper like this, it's a little bit more absorbent, like your mixed me media paper will be. Um, it's going to stay wetter longer, so your wet ink is going to look darker than your dry ink. So just try not to freak out when you're doing that. First of all, it looks it looks darker when it's wet, and then um, you are going with a brighter color, it's gonna look darker, but it will, it'll smooth out, it'll look good, and you don't want everything to be perfectly smooth. I know that's a big trend in um, marker coloring is to have these perfectly smooth gradients, and that's fine if you're drawing something that's really smooth, but um, if you're drawing something that's got some texture to it, like the iciness of a popsicle, or uh, something that is handmade, like the, you know, the different layers of the juice that's in that popsicle, you want to have um, some rough patches. You want to have the imperfections, because that's what's going to make it look realistic. Now here I'm going right over that uh, beige base coat that I put in with a colored pencil. It's just kind of like a burnt sienna, I would say, and I'm just kind of um, putting in some wood grain and that's the same color that I sketched that popsicle stick with so it worked out really well now I'm going in with a I would say it's kind of like a sky blue color and I'm adding the detail and the darker shadows in the blue area of the popsicle I'm using small strokes small like um but either long ovals or or even um, even linear strokes, but I'm trying to make them random enough that you don't really notice that they're color pencil strokes because I do not intend to blend these out. Um, I might go over them with a marker, and this a lot of times I'll use a chisel end for that because um, it'll really kind of like melt and push around the pigment if I want to. So you can get a smoother effect with that on top of a marker. Um, now the risk you might run with that, especially if you're using like the really expensive rubber foam nib markers like Copic um, on the brush tips, you, it, it can tend to draw up some of that wax from your pencil. So um, using a felt tip like a chisel end or one of the less expensive markers that have a compressed fiber nib, it seems to be a little bit less um, uh, less harmful to those nibs. I think there's something with the foam rubber that gets easily clogged with waxiness. So I, I never go over it with my Copics or my Art and Fly, anything that's at that foamy nib. But if it's got a felt nib, I feel pretty comfortable going over that. And, uh, and it really does help break down the waxes and the pigments and blend it if I need it to blend. Now, I find that white pencils, there's very few really good white pencils. I find that Derwent makes a really nice white pencil in both their drawing and color soft lines. Um, I like their, their 
their um, their light fast line too, but I think for white it doesn't really matter so much. It's not like it's going to fade into some other color. Uh, and I like Prismacolor whites, so those are really good options to add to whatever set of colored pencils you have because a lot of times the whites just are kind of a bummer. So to get that nice opaque white, you want a wax base pencil such as Derwent Drawing or the Derwent Color Soft or the Prismacolor Premier. So grab a few of those next time you're at the art store. You can actually get all those those pencils open stock. So if you're placing an order, say, with, with Blick or another big art supplier that sells open stock products, you can get one or two pencils of each variety. Um, and I don't think any of them have, have minimums you have to buy. You do get better deals when you're buying more pencils, but if you just want to you know, grab a white, you can do that. Now here is where I can go in with some darker colors. If I don't feel like I've gotten enough contrast, you can always go back in with more color. Um, you can soften edges just by flicking over, but um, I find that kind of going over everything with the white really helps everything kind of um, integrate, and it also gives you that icy texture. And this is a Derwent drawing pencil. This is one of my vintage ones. Um, I actually found an extra one in a uh, old box of colored pencils, so I was super psyched because I love that pencil. I actually have the Derwent set of 24 drawing pencils. That's all they have in that line, and it's such a delightful set of pencils. If you ever, if you like earthy tones, you want a light, fast pencil. A wonderful option. So that's how that's looking at this stage of the game. We will do some finishing touches on that, but that's your basic alcohol marker with pencil on top. And now we're going to move over to watercolor with color pencils. Now I wet the popsicle and I dripped in some colors and um, I was kind of a ding dong because I forgot to turn the camera on. Uh, so now what I'm doing is still adding color and just trying to blend these colors together. Now I've never used the watercolor well, actually, this is the first time I've used this paper, period, but I hadn't used watercolors on this bamboo mixed media paper. So um, I think what I would recommend doing on this is actually not wetting the paper first. I think just going in with more diluted paint and just switching colors or cleaning my brush and switching colors and dragging the next color in to do an ombre effect would be better. But um, I'm usually working on watercolor paper and I do a wet and wet technique generally for first layers. So um, you basically just get a, get a coat of paint on there, uh, blend the colors together a little bit, but you want that kind of swirly iciness in there. So try not to overwork it and be careful not to get too dark. I got a little too dark on this and had to overcompensate for that as we were working. Now at this stage, the paper is dry and I thought, oh, that got a little too light, but honestly, I should have just left it and started working in with the color pencils. Um, it would have saved time, and I think I would have had a better effect because I got my colors much too bright in here, and it ended up being um, almost like a totally different value than the other two. I did end up being able to bring them together, but I think if I started with a lighter base, like I did with the alcohol marker one, which is my favorite, by the way, um, I would have had a little bit more success. So I'm going right in with that Derwent drawing white, and trying to grab some of those highlights. Now, I am having a little bit of an issue trying to get everything to stick down, and I think it's just because I started to put down the color pencil, um, the Spiro Farben color pencils, which are pretty, um, they're pretty oily, and I found that trying to get the white to stick on top of that was a little bit more difficult. I think because I put a lot more time in with the marker layer on the previous popsicle, it really took a lot of the work out that I had to do with the pencils. I didn't have to do much with the pencils because I spent a lot of time with the markers. Now with the watercolors, I was, um, I won't say I was rushing, but I did that really quickly, and I didn't, um, I don't think I've, I didn't put as much thought into it. I think I should have done wet on dry and I would have had much more control and I would have had a better base layer. So I find that I had to do a lot of the work over again with colored pencil. And also this is a darker popsicle. It's got more um, like grape or purple juices in it. So I do end up going in with like the purples and the indigos um, and the plums a lot more on this one. So that's what I'm doing here. I am just kind of, kind of coloring, nothing, nothing fancy. I'm not, um, I always say this. Um, I enjoy using colored pencils, but I I don't consider myself a colored pencil artist because I kind of um, just kind of slap it in there and then you know smooch it smooch it around. Um, I don't like to work in a ton of layers. I like to be a little bit more direct with my application, and I do like to add kind of thicker um, layers of color. So this right here is a Prismacolor little nubbin that I have in that pencil holder, and I find that if I'm having issues with things sticking 
uh, a white pencil sticking, like if I'm using the Derwent Chinese White or Derwent Color Soft, for whatever reason, that color, that Prismacolor Premier White does tend to stick on top of more surfaces. I think because it's just so soft. It's like my softest white pencil. I don't have the soft Holbein. Some people have said there's a soft Holbein that's really good here. Look at that little nubbin. I need to like glue that on the end of another pencil or something. Um, I hate to waste that precious, precious Prismacolor White because I do use them. I go through them like water. Um, and I actually had another one ready to go, so I think I did end up <laughs> giving up on that because it's too small to sharpen. Um, and uh, and we'll get back to that in a minute. But I did do, again, the wood graining texture with the Schripperfarben. Schripperfarben? I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced. If you know, spell, please spell it out phonetically for me <laughs> in the comments below. That would be super helpful. And I've decided to go back to the Chinese white. Um, I don't think I found my long Prismacolor yet, so I'm like, uh, I'm going in there. Although the thing I like about the Chinese white, it is a little bit firmer. And so I can really get those uh, those kind of scratchy, icy marks in there, and that's working pretty well. I'm tweaking the color again. I'm going back and forth between the icy whites and the colors of the popsicle. I'm trying to get some of the swirls um, and streaks of colors in there. It's almost, um, it almost has like a little bit of a chevron pattern here and there with the colors kind of blended together between the different flavors. And I just, I love the little details like that. I think it's, it's kind of fun to show that. Um, but I'm, you know, basically just trying to get the texture and, um, and everything. Oh, this was neat. So I grabbed my, my watercolors again. I'm like, I feel like I just need some more darks in there, but I didn't want to mess with the pencils. And I'm like, oh, I know I'll grab my watercolor and the watercolor will settle in between the um, the paper fibers where there's no colored pencil on top. So that's kind of fun to do. If you do watercolor over colored pencils, the colored pencil will resist. The colored pencil will resist and then the um, the paint will stick in between onto the, the fibers of the paper that it can reach. It's not being protected by pencil. So I thought that was really kind of cool. And um, and I did that. Now I also discovered that these uh, Schreiber Farben pencils also were slightly water soluble. So sometimes when I went over with the brush, it actually kicked up and activated some of the paint that was underneath, uh, or, or kicked up and activated some of the pencil that was up. And certain colors are more reactive than others. The uh, purples, in particular, are very reactive, which did cause me a little bit of trouble in the finishing touches section, which you'll um, you'll see in a little bit here. But I was you know redefining some colors, places where I didn't feel like I had enough contrast going in with the watercolor paint and just um just you know just tweaking a bit and the reason I wanted to stress how long this painting took is because I know you can watch a video like this and you see it's not time-lapsed even though it's edited and you may be under the impression that I painted this in half an hour and no it was three hours and 39 minutes so I just wanted that to be accurate and the times I forgot to, to turn on the camera were not included in that so maybe it was closer to four hours I don't know I enjoyed every minute of it though I'll tell you that so with that colored pencil only version I am and I haven't done the finishing touches on any of these yet yet but on the colored pencil only version what I'm doing is applying a light layer of the colored pencils and the reason I'm doing that even though you know I'm not a huge layerer is because when I work colored pencils only I know that I'm going to be limited to the tooth of the paper so if I charge in there guns a blazing and uh, fill that tooth of the paper with a lot of pressure I'm going to be seriously limited with the nuance of colors that I can get. Now that's not a big deal if I'm working over marker or watercolor or something where I've already established my values and my colors and I'm just using the colored pencils as kind of um, uh, zhuzhing it up a little bit, uh, using it as, as a makeup basically on top. But when I'm using colored pencils on its own, I have to be really mindful of how much pigment I put down. And this is what proper colored pencil artists do, <laughs> not hacks like me most of the time. You know, they build it in layers and it's just because you're not filling the tooth of the paper. If you work in light layers, you can always tweak that color. You can nudge it. You can nudge that purple a little more blue. You can nudge that purple a little more red. You can nudge that yellow a little more orange. You have the um, the room in the tooth of that paper to to make those complex colors. And that's really important if you're using a limited color palette. So there's kind of, um, there's a couple different thoughts on what to do when you're looking to purchase supplies. And my general rule of thumb is if it's a dry media, it's better to have more colors. If it's a wet media, you can get by with much fewer colors, meaning like water, any, any sort of paint, like tube paint, pan paint, anything like that, you can get by with a very limited palette because you can mix so readily. But if you're using something like um, colored pencils, uh, you need more. If you're using watercolor pencils, you need less because you can blend them so easily. If you're using alcohol markers, I would say you need more because they dry really quick. 
Um, but if you're using watercolor markers, you can get by with fewer because they blend a lot easier with a wet brush. So that's just kind of um, kind of my rule of thumb. However, if you've got high quality colored pencils and you work in a layering fashion, you can actually get by with a small set of colored pencils that are high quality because they'll have that pigment load and you keep layering and layering and layering, getting those subtle, um, those subtle color shifts and you can have a set of 12 and do beautiful works, but you need a good quality of pencil with a pencil load. And I'm talking about like the legacy brands. I'm talking about um, Derwent. I'm talking about Faber-Castell. Um, I'm talking about Karen Dosh. Maybe Prismacolor. I, I'm a big Prismacolor fan. However, um, I wouldn't consider them one of the top quality pencils. I would consider them a good pencil, especially if you like blending and you like the thick application of color. But if you want to layer a lot of colors together, I don't think I would choose that one just because it's got a, such a high wax content. Um, I like Prismacolor for its opacity on top of other media, but um, I don't know if that's. I don't think that's one I would recommend for a beginner that wants a a. a, um, a limited color palette. But I have to say. Um, you know, for the price of a smaller set of pencils, you can get, you know, a 90 or 72 or 96 or 98, whatever the size uh, set I have here of the Shipper, Shipper Farben. <laughs> I'm just going to mumble that. I have no idea. Uh, pencils that I'm using. Now here I'm using odorless mineral spirits to blend them together, but um, I could have just used water. I find out in a little bit. I mean, I, I, I guess maybe it didn't dawn on me how water soluble they were when I was adding the watercolor to it because they weren't completely melting, but um yeah, water would have been just as effective on these, I think. But I'm using odorless mineral spirits. The um, advantage to odorless mineral spirits, even if your pencils will move a bit in water, um, it's not that big of an advantage because you don't need that much water, is that um, if your paper is uh, tending to want to buckle on you, it's not going to buckle. If you use odorless mineral spirits or any other like sort of solvent versus water because water kind of impregnates the paper and makes it makes the fiber swell where alcohol and uh, mineral spirits do not. So that would be the advantage. I will say that the paper did buckle when I was doing the watercolor treatment, but it flattened back out after it dried. So that was good. So it seemed to have a memory of being flat, I guess. I don't know, because it wasn't taped down or anything. And as you can see, I've turned my picture upside down so that um, I can have my brush kind of pushing away from me. It's just a personal preference. I like to be having the bristles on my brush pushing away from me. And the brush I like to use with a solvent is a Golden Taclon Filbert. It's a number four Filbert, I believe. This is a Royal and Line Nickel. Um, this one is like a unicorn or some mythos or unicorn or something. It doesn't matter. All their Filberts, Golden Taclons are very comparable. Get whatever you can find in your store. They're, I think they're one of the most affordable paintbrush brands. Um, I wouldn't get their super budget sets, but the, uh, you know, the ones that are a couple bucks a piece, open stock, those are really good. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of going over now with some dry pencil to intensify the color. I really love the corals and that kind of melon color that I have in there and the greens. I wasn't so crazy about that kind of magenta color I got going on. It really shifted when I added the um, the mineral spirits to it. Um, and that happens sometimes. Purples are weird. Purples are weird in markers. I think it's whatever the dye is used in um, in purple ink. Alcohol markers, colored pencils, or something, like they can shift. They can change when they dry. It's very weird. I don't know what it is about purple. I think it's why you see so few purple markers um, in the alcohol marker ranges. I think just because they're, they're not consistent. It's very difficult to get a dye that behaves well. And it's a kind of problematic when you're going to blend and you're choosing some colors that look the same when you, when you you test them out but then when you when they dry some shift more pinky orange and some shift more blue and some shift more red it's very it's very bizarre um, so I have gone and added some white and um, I did blend some out because I'm like oh, I wasn't sure about that but then I decided to go back in with a Prismacolor I knew the Prismacolor being so soft and waxy would stick on top of this other layer base of color pencil really well that's another thing about using solvent that's really nice is that if you've exhausted the tooth of your paper and then you use solvent it will um, uh, it'll flatten down the um, it'll, it'll dissolve the wax it'll kind of break the wax up and then the pigment will just kind of absorb into the paper stain the paper if you will and then you get that tooth back the thing to remember is not to um, uh, not to color on it while the paper's still wet make sure it's dry or you'll flatten the tooth with the pressure of the pencil 
Now, I did do some little streaks with the Posca pen because I just wasn't getting it bright enough. And um, I don't know if you can see it here in this clip, but the purple paint was leaching up into the white. And that's when it really hit me. It's like, oh yeah, these are definitely reactive with water. Posca pens have an acrylic ink in them. Um, well, these definitely do because I run them dry and I just fill them with my Dr. Peach Martin's um, acrylic, white acrylic ink um, because I hate to, I hate plastic waste. So I try, I try to refill any of my pens and markers that I can. And so that is just the color pencil with some Posca highlights. And now we are going to do the finishing touches, which is gonna be more Posca highlighting. And um, you could also use a white gel pen if you want. The, um, there's another product you can use. It is a little bit more of an expense. It's called Brush and Pencils Titanium White and Touch Up Texture. And it's uh, these two products you mix together and it makes an archival pencil. Um, it's almost like ground up colored pencil. It's supposed to be archival so it won't flake off on your paintings. I haven't really noticed that as an issue, but um, I guess it could be an issue with gel pens. Um, I personally haven't had a problem with it, but if you're definitely concerned with the archivability, it would be a good thing. Of course, I've got alcohol marker on one of these, so I'm not really intending to sell or display this in light, although I might hang it in my kitchen. Let's be frank, it's pretty cute. <laughs> so I might wanna, maybe I'll make a print first because uh, this also is really fun and, and uh, bright. I'm probably just gonna hang it in my kitchen. Um, <laughs> and I'm actually doing this, uh, I just kind of freehand what I thought like a little juice spill would look like. Like, you know, you set down a popsicle and it starts to melt. That's what I wanted to get here, mainly because I didn't space my popsicles very well and I needed to fill up some of the space. So. Um, I'm doing that same ombre treatment with the pastel tones. I figured that the uh, the juice on like spilled on a table would look much lighter than how it would concentrate it in like a three quarter inch thick popsicle. And I wanted to have that. And I just put a clear stamping block down on my paper to scribble some um, of my brighter color ink down so that I would be able to make some uh, some gentle blends and not, uh, cause I really didn't want to ruin this picture at this stage and it was so pretty. So um, that's a technique I do sometimes. If I want to transition a pastel to a darker color, I will scribble the darker color on a palette or a clear block, anything that I have that's like plasticky or ceramic. And then I pick it up with my lighter marker and then I go in with a darker area with that and then I spread it out. So it's a great way, it's called a palette blending. Um, it's a great way to get your ombre colors without risk of, you know, going in there with a marker that it's too dark and having a stain on your paper you can't lift. And another way to mitigate that risk is to use your colored pencils like I am here. I'm using very, very light circular strokes to, um, to put my pencil down and then I'm going over with my pastel marker to blend it out. Um, and you, you use your, I think I'm using the chisel tip there. Use a chisel tip if you're concerned um, about your markers, the wear and tear on your markers, but um, you're not putting a lot of pressure. It's pretty much the ink that's doing the job there. But if you feel like you need a lot of pressure, I would recommend the chisel tip just cause it's more, um, it's more durable. And now I'm going in with some Prismacolor white and just adding some of those, um, Oh, not super bright shines, but just kind of some of the um, soft, uh, soft highlights on here. And it helps give you that kind of like surface tension of the edge of the water feel to it. And I just think that looks so pretty. I just love it. Um, and this is honestly my favorite part. And so I guess the popsicles themselves probably took me about an hour. Those first three popsicles took me about an hour. Jason said that like the melts were like two hours of footage. <laughs> so the popsicles were probably like, you know, an hour, um, like an hour. Well, no, it was probably half drips and half popsicles because he said it was three hours and 39 minutes. So he said the last part was like two hours long, just the melts were two, two hours of work. Um, but I didn't notice it because I was just having the time of my life, coloring and rainbowing all the things and just having a fun time. So here I'm using a cool gray one and that's a pretty standard color and markers, um, to put a drop shadow on the right side of all of the objects, except for this last one because I hadn't done a drip yet. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to or not. And I kind of regret how elaborate I made this, this uh, spill over here. I should have just done a little bit, but then I was like, oh, I just love spattery techniques and stuff. So I got a little carried away. I was having fun. What can I say? So like the style on the alcohol marker pop and this pop over here, I find were very different. 
um, which is not a bad thing, but it definitely wasn't as cohesive. However, it might have been kind of boring to have them all very similar. So anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Art artistic license, right? Artistic license. I could always cut them apart if I wanted to, but I think they're I think they're kind of fun. I think they're cute. They're all different. We're all unique popsicles in this world, friends. <laughs> and we're all a little drippy sometimes, so what's the problem? Nothing. Uh, so I'm going around this um, spilled popsicle with my cool gray one. Start with those lighter grays, guys. If you're, if you're in doubt, go with those lighter grays. You can always layer up those lighter grays or you can go the next step down. Uh, it's honestly, guys, if you are unsure about markers and you don't know where to start and you don't have a big budget, get a good set of grays. And I know you're thinking that's not fun. That's boring. That's gray, but you're going to learn so much about values. And then you could get like a set of pastel tones or mid tones and you could glaze over those grays and get, um, some really beautiful, colorful drawings. Um, it's not going to be the same as layering up with different tones of colored markers, but it's going to be pretty nice. And most importantly, you're going to learn. And I think you'll probably have a lot more confidence when you start going in with more colors. It's so overwhelming. I'm telling you, alcohol markers, I think is one of the difficult, most difficult mediums to learn. Um, so make it easier on yourself if you can. Uh, take some baby steps and don't give up. If you've got a set of markers and you've just been like frustrated to use them because you don't feel successful with them or they're frustrating. Just don't give up. It takes time. And there, that pretty much does it. I had so much fun with these, uh, these popsicles. I hope you did too. I hope you give mixing your media a try and you use colored pencils on top of another media and see what you think about it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.